November the 8th, 1932, which incidentally was the day that Roosevelt was elected for the first time, and I uh, uh, grew up in Pelican, Louisiana, in DeSoto Parish in the Hill Country. I came from a family that had lived there since before the Civil War. One skirmish of which was fought on our land, incidentally, the Battle of Old Pleasant Hill, which was a battle in which the South prevailed. And uh, we farmed. My father was the cashier and only employee of the Pelican State Bank, a bank they had formed so that the farmers wouldn't have to bury their money in syrup buckets, which they did at that time to, as a matter of security. <laughs> I started to school at age four, a very mature age, and uh, graduated at age 15 from the Pelican High School, <clears throat> which was a consolidated school there. Went to LSU, was said to be the youngest person there, uh, and probably the person who most likely should not have been there. I was completely green, as you can imagine. Uh, graduated in uh, 52 with a bachelor's degree and a commission in the uh, reserve and or regular army. I went into the military service at the height of the Korean War and uh, served on the front line for some while over there. They was uh, banged around a few times, never terribly wounded, but I have a hearing loss that results from one incident and uh, received uh, a Bronze Star for Valor. My interest in the law came initially from the respect which my father had for a couple or so old pioneer lawyers in DeSoto Parish. He often commented on them and commented about things that they had done for him or for other people. And that tweaked my interest a little bit. And some of my teachers had uh, suggested that that might be an appropriate field for me to look into. My wife was a, an assistant home demonstration agent in St. Landry Parish, a wonderful community of Opelousas, when we met on a blind date uh, in 1957. And I was in uh, Lafayette looking for a job and uh, we met and it progressed or regressed into marriage. Uh, we have three sons. With regard to the uh, bar exam, right after World War II as a way of welcoming the veterans back, the legislature decreed that uh, with the Supreme Court's concurrence, that the bar exam would no longer be required for veterans. How being a veteran should exempt you from taking the bar exam was never clear to me, but it simply was a means of uh, welcoming the fellows back that wanted to go to law school. That still prevailed through the year when I was admitted, and I think the following year they started requiring the bar exam again. So when I got my law degree, I was admitted to practice before the Supreme Court within about two weeks or so. I graduated at midterm, and uh, there weren't more than 15 or 16 or so graduates from LSU Law School that 
term. Bill McLeod was one of them who later was a senator from uh, Calcasieu Parish. And I remember catching a ride with Bill to New Orleans. We watched an early Mardi Gras parade the night before and the morning of uh, our induction, we went to the old Supreme Court building there in the quarter, French Quarter. And Justice Seymour made a very nice talk to us. I remember old Judge or Justice Moise was there. He was a very charming, gracious gentleman, and he took some time up with us boys. I say boys because the distaff part of the law had not developed as fully then as it has now. There were no ladies in our immediate group. Uh, just Chief Justice Fournette, of course, was the senior and presiding justice. You had Justice Hammeter from Shreveport, Justice Hawthorne from Northeast Louisiana. Uh, and they, I think, were a distinguished court. Uh, but uh, we were admitted, and I had been fortunate enough to get a good job with what was then the firm of King Anderson and Swift in Lake Charles. It's now called the Raggio firm, I believe. <clears throat> they did mostly oil and gas and defense work and uh, were wonderful to me. I started off at $325 a month, which at the risk of being immodest was one of the highest salaries anybody got at that time. <laughs> I think one one of my compatriots, Jesse McDonald, had gone to work for Hudson Potts and Bernstein for four hundred dollars a month, and we all thought that was like uh, winning the lottery would be these days. The first real contested case that I handled was with uh, an unknown lawyer named Edwin Edwards from uh, Crowley who had been practicing for several years at that time, and it involved some damages that our client, Sun Oil Company, had apparently inflicted on a farmer's property in the course of putting down a well which came in dry, which uh, resulted in uh, a suit for damages. And uh, it was filed, of course, in Crowley. And uh, the case was sufficiently innocuous that they trusted me with it. Uh, I mean, the damages couldn't go very high. And uh, the uh, attorneys for the company and for my firm, the older attorneys knew that the judge was not going to award any huge amount and would certainly award some small amount. <laughs> and should. So they trusted me with it, but the senior partner went with me to try it. And back then, the big firms generally engaged a lo local council to uh, sit in and give some hometown flavor to the defense, which they did. They employed a very capable gentleman from Crowley. And he and the senior partner from our firm watched me fumble along with the case. Uh, it, it turned out about the way I'm sure that the older lawyers expected. The judge gave them, I think, $400 for damages. And I'm sure they deserved that. And I went home rather pleased with myself that they hadn't gotten any more than that. The uh, Original practice, of course, with King Anderson and Swift in Lake Charles involved largely uh, insurance defense work. It involved some commercial collections because the company had some commercial clients. 
And in those days, that task fell on the youngest lawyer. And uh, you spent some time with nominal things like that, naturally. But most of my time was spent with insurance defense, and it got to the point where I was taking an allocation of a case each time the partners, or each of the partners, was, was doing that. We made a move to Bogalusa, and it's been a happy move. My wife was from Bogalusa, from Washington Parish, from rural Washington Parish. And uh, we uh, moved there in 1961, and went into practice with a gentleman who had been a state senator, H. H. Speed Richardson. Richardson was a pioneer name in Washington Parish, and uh, he was good to us. He was also a lobbyist for the railroad and spent a lot of time in Washington, D.C. Uh, eventually that uh, uh, association ran out and uh, I opened my own office in 1967. I credit myself, rightly or wrongly, with having been one of the pioneers in getting a voluntary CLE system going. In the late 60s, a lot of us realized that things were changing so fast that lawyers needed some help each year in keeping up. And uh, working through the Bar Association, we encouraged uh, lectures then it was on an informal basis, it was not required. I remember Henson Moore, who later became our congressman, taking up the money uh, in Baton Rouge, and about 20 of us assembled there one year to go over the uh, recent uh, developments. And uh, that, I thought, was a move forward. I would like to be remembered as a straight shooter, that's enough.